Hey, parents, we know that between sleep training your little ones, folding laundry, and managing your never-ending to-do list, well, finding time to prepare a nutritious meal can feel just about impossible. That's where Factor Meals comes in. They're delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they're delivered right to your doorstep. Factor Meals are here to take one big thing off your plate so you can focus on what really matters, like conquering bedtime without the stress. With a variety of dietitian approved menus, each Factor Meal is made with the freshest ingredients, ensuring you and your family both enjoy taste and nutrition. Check out factormeals.com slash toddler50 and use the code toddler50 to get 50% off your first box and 20% off your second box. That code's toddler50 at factormeals.com slash toddler50. Imagine more peaceful evenings with more time for bedtime stories and less time worrying about meal prep and cleanup. Factor meals are delicious, they're nutritious, and they're effortless. So give yourself the break you deserve. Again, that's factormeals.com slash toddler50 and use code toddler50 to get 50% off your first box and 20% off your next box. This offer is good until the end of April this month. My daughter's always giving me skin products to try and I always use them for a few days and then I just get bored and stop. But since I started using One Skin, and that's today's sponsor, I've been using it twice a day without fail. And I'm not kidding. I've been using it around my eyes and on my face. And within a week, I'm already seeing differences. It's easy to use, and my skin really feels soft, and I think it looks healthier. I'm sure you know this already, but stress, hormone fluctuations, and a lack of sleep can affect your skin. From dry skin to dark spots and acne, your complexion may not be where it used to be, and that's totally normal. However, one skin can really help. I like this company. It's an all-women team of scientists, and they've developed a peptide called OS1, and it improves the health of your skin basically from inside out. In other words, it gets to the root of the problem. And as a physician, it's important to me that the benefits have been backed by studies. Now, for the first time, I'm recommending a skincare product to my daughter. So you can get started today with 15% off using the code TODDLERS at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with the code TODDLERS. Now, after you purchase, they're going to ask you where you heard about them. So please let them know that TODDLERS Made Easy referred you to them, as that's one way of supporting the show. Welcome to Toddlers Made Easy, where there's no fluff, just practical, research-based, 15 minutes or less parenting strategies. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Catherine, a pediatrician with more than 33 years of experience. I'm the author of two parenting books, the founder of Healthiest Baby, and the mother of four amazing adult kids, and let's not forget Smudge, my great big golden doodle. Today's bonus episode is about how to nurture your child's hungry little mind, and we're also going to talk about cleaning up. Before we begin, I just want to do a quick overview on the importance of play, because many people think play is just burning off steam or keeping your child busy. But really, play is essential for the growth of a child's brain. It helps them to learn language, solve problems, interact socially, and maintain even physical health. Let's start with an interesting tidbit. Did you know that when toys are designed to talk, it often leads to less verbal interactions with parents, and this reduction in conversation can impact a child's language development, since they end up speaking less as well. Now, let's start off with how we store toys. So the first priority is to give everything a home. Keeping the play space organized so every toy has a home makes it easier for a child to know where the toys lives and where to return them. I also like to suggest providing a tray or a box so that toys can be easily moved from the storage place to the floor. Now, the next principle I always find is very interesting and very true. Fewer toys is better. 
If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably already read the post that I have that discusses how fewer toys leads to greater creativity, longer length of play, and even depth of play. I refer to a study that looked at playing with four toys versus 16 toys, and four toys came out far better. Kids played longer, they played on their own longer, and they were more creative in their play. Now, I doubt there's an exact number of right toys, but I'd watch your child and see how they do with their toys. How many do they play with and how many do they just touch here and there? I'd aim for less is more. Now, there is one exception, and that's books. I'm not sure you can ever have too many books. But instead of having your books all in one place, I'd sprinkle them in different rooms all over the house so you can just do a bit of reading here and there throughout the day. The next topic is toy rotations. Are you tired of that toy tornado taking over your home? Well, toy rotations are a great way to maximize a child's creativity while minimizing the mess in your home. Now, you can rotate weekly, monthly, or really whatever works best for you. There's no right or wrong. There's no rule how to do this. But one thing I think is important is watch your child play. See what they like to play with, what they're really using. Those are not the things to put away. Put away the things that get barely any attention from your child. They're just taking up space and actually causing distractions. Now let's take a moment and talk about tidying up with toddlers. After playtime comes cleanup, which, believe it or not, can also be part of the fun. It's a chance to teach responsibility, organization, and the art of transforming a chore into a game. Even the littlest ones can help with tidying up. Yes, even those sweet little toddlers between one and two years of age, they're quite capable of helping out. So just keep your expectations realistic and your instructions simple. Toss them easy tasks like, can you bring me the truck, please? Or time to put your books back in the bin. The goal is keep the chore very small early on because you want your child to succeed and you want to be able to say, great job. Now, here's another tip. Don't cut into their playtime abruptly. If at all possible, wait for a natural pause in their play before asking for help. And again, this is one of those situations if you just think about your own experience, you're into something or you're in a great part of a book or even watching a movie. Nobody likes to be told, turn it off right now or stop right now. If you can find that natural pause, you'll help your child and yourself by waiting for that moment. And another good thing is it also helps to prolong a child's attention if they're not interrupted consistently. Now, this approach not only makes a child more inclined to cooperate, but it'll also help stretch their attention span since they're not being pulled away from the thing that they're interested in. To make cleanup less of a chore, turn it into a playful challenge. Encourage a child to gather, let's say, all the blue toys or create a little safari by asking for all the animal toys, especially those sneaky tigers and bulky trucks. Keep things upbeat by setting manageable goals. Can you pick up five toys for me? This way you end the task with an enthusiastic, good job, which will make them puff up with pride. So frame the post cleanup plan as a positive thing to look forward to. Instead of saying, no snack until we tidy up, flip the script to once we've cleaned up, we're going to have a yummy snack. And don't forget the power of partnership. Ever notice how tasks seem lighter when you're doing them with someone you enjoy being around? Well, the same things holds true for your child. Side by side, turn the mundane into fun by cleaning up together. Now to finish up here, play is the backbone of childhood, shaping learning, fostering growth, forming connections, solving problems, and just sparking the joy of new discoveries. One takeaway I'd like to highlight today is that less is more. Fewer toys benefit both you and your child. Remember, you don't need expensive toys. Those open-ended toys that can be played with in different ways are ideal. Now, there's still lots of topics I'd like to get to around play. For instance, we need to talk about different kinds of play, what to do if your child won't play without you, and play mistakes to avoid. 
but we'll leave these for another day. Now, this is a great beginning, but if you'd like more support on how to handle all those unwanted toddler behaviors, please check out our courses, Toddlers Made Easy and Potty Training Made Easy, in the show notes. These courses will teach you big-hearted ways to handle all those crazy, awesome toddler moments, but it'll also protect your child's self-esteem and help you avoid becoming a pushover. Thank you for tuning in today, and I'll see you next week.